And a good uh, afternoon. This is our little uh, gathering that we do every Monday uh, here at uh, uh, it's not really what we call gap. Well, it's it's cabinet. Sure, why not? Anyway, this is uh, this is what we're doing, uh, and we're uh, let me just make sure that we're going out on uh, on Facebook. Okay. Yeah, there we are. There I am. Okay, good. There we go. All righty. So hello, everybody. Let me, oh boy, we got a whole bunch of people ready to go. Admit all. Uh, and we should see who's coming in here. We got, uh, oh, well, we got uh, Jeff Stein. We got, uh, let's see here. Oh, Mike Chisholm up there in Canada. Andrew Deutsch. Hello, Andrew. Hello, Charlie Wallace. Hello, Len LaFrisco. And uh, I guess maybe uh, more people will join us as we uh, continue. Oh, here comes Rick. Hold on a second. Let me admit Rick to the group. Um, mm. There he is. Hello, Rick. Hey, hello, Ben. How are you? I'm fine. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and uh, a good afternoon to all of you. Has it been, has it been treating you all well? I that just, might be the first time I've heard you call Shecky Rick. I don't think I've ever heard you say Rick. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, Vinny Favalli called me Rick yesterday. Yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. Is that a first time for him? That I can remember. I sometimes call you Rick. I sometimes call you Shecky. Well, I use Rick as you know now. You know, yeah. once the show went off the air. Yeah, right. Well, Shecky was, uh, that was a name given you by... Either Morty or Dave, and I still can't remember. Yeah. But as I sent Mike the other day a copy of Late Show News from 82, and I mentioned as Shecky in that. So oh, I see. Okay. So you, but uh, I, well, I like Shecky only because I feel that everybody who deals with comedy, as I have, uh, <laughs> should have to deal with, uh, should have to know Shecky. It's a good name. Well, my yeah. father was called that when he was a stockbroker. So it, Oh, he was known as that. Okay. Something that happens. Yeah. By the way, speaking yeah, so of, it's not uncommon. Yeah. Speaking of the late show, uh, I watched that series they're doing on uh, on uh, CNN. Yeah. And uh, I watched it. There's a first episode they ran, which was is I think out of order because they wanted to go with something that would grab the audience back. No, the first episode goes back to 49. Well, yeah, the, Steve Allen. No, but the, the, the one I watched last night was the one that had the whole thing about uh, Leno and Dave. No, no, no the one show. that aired what? on CNN. Last night Where did you see that? It was 49 to 65. I, I yeah. not, last night, that was the one that served me up. Today, it went and showed me the other one. Oh, okay. Okay. But what I didn't like about what I watched, and I'm waiting to watch it with Marjorie, actually, um, is there's no mention of Broadway Open House. Yes, there is. There is? I didn't go long enough in it then? It's there for about 30 seconds. When? It's before, out of before. Jerry Lester and Dagmar, and they yeah. just mentioned oh, it. Oh, boy. But did they mention that after they started out with about the Tonight Show and everything? They said how the Tonight Show came to be because you had Today and then they had Tonight and, you know. No, they basically gave it all credit to Sylvester Pat Weaver. Yes. Yeah. But it didn't, they, as far as I went, they didn't, there was no mention of Broadway Open House. No, there was, there was but oh, okay. very quickly and it was later in the show. Isn't that an important part of the whole story, though? I mean, that is the first time. Well, I think Bill Carter's logic was, well, Steve Allen didn't have the desk, so I can't say that. Yeah, Steve but, Allen didn't have the desk, no. That's but they gave Faye Emerson a lot of time. Really? Well, I didn't go that far in it because I'm waiting to watch it with Marjorie. I'm I ready. Don't I, I don't know if I can show her the episode I watched because it looks to me... Oh, no, that's like the fourth episode, I think. I want to see it in well, order, Alex. Well, I, I watched the fourth episode then last night, and I, I can't find first. it anywhere else. But was it on CNN, or was it, it on, on your CNN Go. CNN Go. Oh, that's why. It is on CNN oh. Go. Oh, okay. All right. Hello. But CNN Broadcast yeah. Channel ran episode one. Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. 
It's a thing they're doing on CNN, folks, about the history of late night, of uh, the late night talk shows. You know, and um, uh, uh, the the but the the I felt the one that I watched last night covered way too much. Where I would have thought they would they would have covered the Leno uh, Letterman situation on its own. It's almost a whole episode because, of course, Bill Carter, I guess, who produced this series or something. Uh, wrote a whole book on that subject. Two yeah. books. Two yeah. books. But you know, there's a lot to cover. You know, from the current era. You know. Yeah. Well, no, you, you say know, post Letterman Leno. The, sec the second book he wrote was about Leno being booted out in. Uh, Leno, Leno Conan, I guess it was. Leno Conan, yeah, that whole thing. Yeah, it was a continuation though. Like they, they, they read definitely like one big book to me. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, they, but the first book was, I thought, sensational. Didn't you, Shecky? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I read it in galleys. Yeah, yeah. And you're quoted in there, I believe. I don't think so. Are you aren't? Okay. No, I'm in that other book. Well, I'd like to think you're what more. The other guy wrote. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, no, Bill Carter, you know, he had good sources, as I like to say. Now, I, uh, Steve Bender, I got something to talk to you about. I've been made aware, I think, by Mike Chisholm. I think it was Mike. Somebody made me aware of the fact that when I was uh, kicked out of WMCA, yep. you, they held a big demonstration outside the studio. Correct. And you were one of the people demonstrating. I was there, and I had I have the clipping from Newsday somewhere, you know, from that. Um, yeah, that was... Um, Big, big event for me. About a thousand people showed up. Yeah, yeah. You know where I was during that? I do not. I was That's... about a block away looking around the corner to see what was happening. <laughs> because I thought it would have been wrong of me to show up. Well, do you think that now? Do you really think it would have been wrong? I think it would have been great for you to show up. I, I just... How I, I, it just it was a momentary decision that I didn't want to be there. No, I, I get it. I um, I understand that. But you know, if, if you would have been very well received. But <laughs> also, out of my own curiosity, I wanted to see how many people showed up, and then I turned my head around the corner, and I went, "Oh my fucking god!" Yeah. You know, <laughs> this is amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Did I know you then, Shecky? MCA? When I yeah. No. Okay. All right. Yeah. We met in '78, if I remember correctly. Yeah, MCA was uh, the MCA situation was '75. Yeah, it must have been around '75. Was my senior year in high school, and I think that was well, maybe '74, or something even. I'm trying to remember. I went to I went there in '70. Right. And then I was there. Wow. I, I, but you were doing fill-in work in the late 70s, weren't you? Yeah. I went back there and did fill-in work. Yeah. Yeah. And no, then it was I, 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 73 is when that had to happen because I think I was out of there by 72, 73, okay. if I remember correctly. You know, it's it's all a blur to me. <laughs> Marjorie has been. Well, and then, of course, me. do you remember Marjorie we has been joining did the midnight me in, show? What? We did the midnight show on cable. Midnight Blue? Well, I did Midnight no, Blue. No, I did Midnight, Midnight, Midnight Blue Talk from 74 to 79. Yeah, when you yeah but then Wednesday nights, you did the Midnight to 1 a.m. show, which was you, me, Steve Weiner, Tiedemann. That was a Midnight show? <laughs> yeah. Really? I thought it yeah, was. Yeah, because What's Her Name was across the hall, Robin Bird. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Well, it wasn't a commercial show. So, yeah. when no, you, you're when on you channel C or D. Now, Mandy knows nothing of what we're talking about. <laughs> the whole, uh, uh, oh, oh, really? Somebody's calling me. Uh, I, I don't. Your phone. Hmm? I just want to interject that Hi. I have Facebook memory. What? And to, I have Facebook memory. Yeah. Today it was one year ago today. That I did the Zoom call the first time. Oh, really? Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> and you have a Facebook. Welcome, memory. Mandy. You're have always it? a joy. <laughs> you guys wow. were super cute when you went out yesterday and you had your Bloody Mary. I was super mm. happy for you. <laughs> <laughs> 
I never get him to go out. And if we go out, he doesn't walk more than a block. No, well, so I don't. I don't like walking with you because you 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 have a certain pace you like to walk. I was at. injured yesterday. Went nice and slow. Yeah, you went nice and slow. But you know what? I did two days in a row on my walk up those stairs or coming down those stairs. I slipped and fell. Really? Oh, boy. Yeah, yeah. And it, I think it had something to do with the medicine I take this uh, pregabalin because it makes you kind of wobbly. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I uh, I like caught my foot on something and I started to fall and where I guess if I had my sense of balance, I would have been able to compensate for it. But I just, I let myself just fall, you know. Rather. I like the video of you explaining what brunch is to Marjorie. <laughs> well, is, well, no, she, she always, she, she says, we're I'm having brunch. brunch. She's very, she's very dogmatic about it. It's lunch. It's not dinner. It's not breakfast. It's <laughs> brunch well certain restaurants in manhattan only have a brunch menu on the weekend and my question was why don't they call it lung fest <laughs> <laughs> makes no sense it what was the no dinner one it makes no sense does it makes brunch, no sense does brunch make sense yes only because somebody named it that i my feeling is you eat breakfast you eat lunch you eat dinner you don't eat something in the middle called brunch or maybe before dinner, something called liner. I don't what know. What if it's lumber? <laughs> Only on weekends. But Sarah Best used to have a menu uh, for breakfast, for early lunch, late lunch, and then dinner. Really? That makes yeah. sense. The Hobbits call it second breakfast. It's also <laughs> called charging you slightly higher money for the same yeah. thing. Absolutely. You get unlimited or Bloody Marys or whatever. Anytime we go anywhere where they have a Bloody Mary with your lunch, or, or, or I guess a Bloody Mary, mm -hmm. Marjorie always makes me order that lunch. <laughs> because it comes have, with it. Because she can yeah. have two Bloody I Marys because I don't them. want mine. <laughs> you know me, Kathleen. Jesus, yeah. When did you ever Enough see me? Facts, when did you Alex. ever see me drink, Kathleen? You never saw me drink. No, you know, one time you had gone out with Bob Rubin, and you oh, called geez. me up and said you were wasted because you had a taste <laughs> of his <laughs> margarita. Yeah, no. Marjorie Not knows, a drinker. knows that. You, you, you is she? Uh, I just don't drink really. Period. But yeah. when I have just one drink, I'm, I'm out of it. I'm yeah. Of it. Because your body's not used to it. I, my body's not used to it. And uh, yeah, I don't, I don't want it. I'm, I have very low tolerance, don't I, Marjorie, to, to drugs and stuff like that? What? I, I, oh, I, I, we're doing a show here. Uh, <laughs> I, mean, <laughs> I said, I have a low tolerance to drugs. And I pointing. wouldn't say that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you wait a minute. You mean you taking them or other people yeah, taking them around? Like, oh, bullshit! Telling them. No, I, have, I have a low tolerance uh, to other people. Do. Oh, oh. No, but I have a, a low Enough. tolerance. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yes, Mandy. I have to do work. I know. Oh man! Okay. Oh, what a bum! <laughs> That's a bunch of bullshit. But the yeah. noodle. <laughs> She just retire. Hey, we have, to, <laughs> we have to give her. She lives in Georgia. You know, she survived a tornado okay. today. Okay, sweetheart. Oh, it's so bad. What? So <laughs> survived a tornado today. Not far Put from us her on office. mute. That's terrible. Put us on mute. Now, wait a minute. Did you have? Did, did well, you have... people keep coming in here. Uh... <laughs> well, just tell them you're talking to your father, like I said last week, and they'll believe you. <laughs> Next week. Next week I will. I will take my lunch break at four o'clock. Okay. Go. Okay. Take care, Mandy. Man, Bye, man. Bye. You think the world of you. Bye. Bye. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, it, people always go, oh, sad that Mandy had to leave early. Yeah, I, know. <laughs> I think that's the same storm that went through here on, on, on Saturday. Yeah. It oh, floods really? and everything in Texas. Yeah. Another tornado in that area. Huh? I guess you got it too. Did you, um, uh, 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 Boddicker? No, no, it, it didn't hit up here at all. 
thought Jack but, might yeah. get by a tornado or something or something. Yeah. That was that was a uh, that was last that was even before the yeah sometime during the last week. Yeah, he got he got hit by hail, big hail. Oh hail. Right. Oh okay. Oh. That was my sister said that before. today in Georgia that she might get a tornado today. Yeah. They did have one. They did. Of Atlanta, That's southwest of Atlanta. Mm. Well, so Marjorie and I went out to brunch. <laughs> and uh, we, uh, we went. Keep digging. I, Keep we, digging. We, there's this big, huge <laughs> staircase that goes up to Columbia University. That's really kind of a hellish uh, stairs, isn't it, Marjorie, wouldn't you say? I mean, it. No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Well, for me, it was hellish. Well, because you. What? What? Go ahead. Say you did it. it. You went up the steps, so don't complain. I went up. Yeah, I fell. My butt still hurt. How do you fall up the stairs? <laughs> How do you fall up the stairs, man? That's Believe talent. Me, if, if anybody can do it, I can. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> no, I had uh, I uh, I uh, mm. uh, my shoe hit wrong on a step going up, and then it catapulted me forward. Sorry, was that was that what it looked like, Marjorie? You were fine. You just tripped. That's all. Yeah. And Marjorie's a little stoned because Marjorie, before she comes on here, talks to her girlfriend every day at three o'clock. And they, you have what? A glass of champagne? Not today. And a joint? Not today. <laughs> no, why not today? You feel like it. But you went out with your other friend and you got high. Well, that's a different story. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. <laughs> That was hours ago. That was at eleven. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because uh, um, I uh, uh, can I can I say something? I have to complain about something. You oh, know, every not. night before I go to sleep now, if I don't take my nice pill, which puts me to sleep, really knocks me out. I smoke a little bit of a joint, which you leave in an ashtray for me. Your friend doesn't roll good joints. What's up with that? <laughs> they don't At least draw I'm not well. Doing it. They don't draw well. Well, uh, it sure beats me doing it. Really? Yeah. You should have me do it. I wasn't bad at it. You tried it about a couple months ago and it was terrible. Well, I haven't done it in years. <laughs> well, neither have I. That's why I let Teresa do it. Yeah. It's not that difficult to task. <laughs> it's not at all. And it's legal now in New York. Yes. Here we are arguing about... Uh, I think maybe well, if... We have Andrew come over to see you. He uh, he's a, a master. We'd yeah, like cool. you to come down to New York. Me too. This, yeah. I think it was last, last week, and the day that was four twenty, you know, for mm -hmm. pot. <laughs> I, I was I was in Union Square Park, and there was this line like twice around the park. And I asked someone what was going on, and they were giving if you could had your vaccination card, they were giving out joints. There was the mayor. <laughs> Marijuana. Oh, I love it. <laughs> Union Square. Incredible yeah. psychedelic uniform, and there's a big sign saying "Jabs for Joints." Oh wow! wow. It was Excellent. fantastic. Excellent. It was fantastic. I didn't wait online. It was like a three-hour wait for a joint. I wasn't going to wait online for three hours. But, um, yeah, me either. It was a very, very fun event, and I was—I happened to be wearing a Grateful Dead T-shirt. I had never gotten so many compliments in my life. Fit in. Uh, well, Marjorie kept telling me about. Um, uh, you know, the cards that we should go get them laminated. Right. So she had them laminated. And now they're saying you shouldn't laminate your cards. Yeah. I the heard point that. is, eBay is selling them. So, what New York State was, they have it all in New York State. And you get this app that shows that you've been vaccinated and all the extras that you got, it has all the information in it. Israel, you uh, and New York, and I think other states are beginning to do it. Well, Florida banned the passport today. Yeah. <laughs> they banned the passport? Yes. Yes. Why? And then that school where the teachers are Freedom. not teachers are yeah. not allowed in the school if they're vaccinated? Yeah. If they are vaccinated. Yeah. They they banned the teachers who are vaccinated, they're out. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Wait, this is in Florida? In Florida. Yeah. That's so insane. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I could say that if they wanted to say, well, you don't have to get one, fine. But why, what, what is the harm if a teacher is vaccinated? Poison the right. kids' minds. Hmm? Yeah. 
<laughs> no, it makes no sense at all. Well, that's Florida. Makes sense. That's called oxymoron. Yeah. Makes no sense. Called well, Florida. That's interesting though, that, they, that, they've, that they've done that. And here in New York, uh, you, unless you, uh, if you don't have a uh, um, uh, vaccination card, uh, you don't get a free joint. So, you know. Or a free I, donut at Krispy Kreme. Oh yeah, get free donut. Every yeah. single day for a year. Every single day for a every year? Every single day. They probably figure, I think they're thinking. I've gone in twice. I'm, I'm thinking about that. I'm saying, well, that's going to put them out of business because they're not going to sell very many donuts. And then I'm Are thinking, you kidding? People go in, they buy a dozen donuts. Yeah. Oh. Okay. So if you go in to get your get one, a baker's dozen, you they get have it in a separate spot. spot. In fact, huh? they have a line for the free donuts and it's in a separate part. Really? Oh, okay. All right. But I mean, I, I um, um, you know, I mean, but they say don't, don't, don't. Um, uh, of course, you didn't. You didn't ex exactly laminate it. Yours is just sealed around the edges, right? It's called lamination. No, that's not lamination. Is you it? can open it up, Alex. You can. Yeah. You've done that before. What other stuff? Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, I just yeah, you to... can't open it if it's been laminated. That's, yes, that's you can. Hard. It's like there's an air pocket around it. Mm -hmm. You just have to cut the lamination off. Yeah. So I wasn't supposed to get it tattooed. <laughs> nobody ever tells me anything no tattooing <laughs> tattoo is okay because they can still if you get a third shot they can put yeah that they can add a tattoo to not, not where i got a tattooed but you know, <laughs> here's the thing i've got my thing from, you know the, the passport thing all right uh that we get that you just simply go online and the state checks to see what you've had and then it gives you a one of those Q a QRC code or whatever it's called <laughs> QR code and uh, you're good to go Ask but I guess that won't do me any good in Florida no because well first of all you have no intentions of visiting Florida <laughs> so what's the point well why have they banned passports that's what I don't understand what's the thinking on banning look who the governor what part is of now. yeah what part of Florida don't you understand yeah well, no, I lived the there for a very short time. So did I. Come on, like three weeks. That's, yeah. Perfectly in line for Florida. Yeah. I guess. A stinky, sweaty swamp of a place. <laughs> <laughs> I think you described it like I would describe it. Totally. Yeah. No, it was, yeah. it was, I had, I went down there, God, to work when I was between jobs in San Francisco. The quake. Between yep. the same job. No, I remember. 5105. Yes. Was between the same job. Yep. I, I went down there, moved down there with my uh, girlfriend at the time. Santhi. Yeah. And it was just ghastly. It was the most ghastly yes. experience of my life. I hated yeah. living there. Look who's falling asleep. <laughs> oh. <laughs> the only good thing about Florida is you don't have to own a calendar. You just look at what insect bit you, you know what month it is. <laughs> <laughs> Alex, didn't you have That's state troopers truth. coming at you in Florida? <laughs> what? Didn't you have problems with the state troopers in Florida? No, it's the uh, local police. Local oh. police. Yeah, they heard that I had said something nasty about them. Mm. So they pulled me over and really scared the crap out of me. You know, I mean, they had they had a police dog growling at me during the whole incident. <laughs> I mean, it was terrible. Lucky. And then finally, I said to them, I said, I never said anything about you on the air. You know, well, somebody called us and told us you did. Oh, and that's the reason you pull over people and, <laughs> and, have, and, and have dogs snarling at them. Oh, In Florida, good. yes. Good, <laughs> good. Why are you doing this to me? I'm not black. You know, I mean, fine. <laughs> It was amazing. It was just amazing. Uh, that's the kind of thing the police got away with in those days. And I don't know if they get away with it now, but I would imagine if it's Florida, they probably still get away with that. I got roughed up by a cop in Florida. Did you really? Yeah, yeah. What happened? The, the, the short of it is I had had two vehicles and I sold one. Yeah. And in Florida, the insurance companies report it, but they don't check to see if you still own the vehicle. So they canceled my driver's license as not being insured, even though I didn't own the vehicle that wasn't insured. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
So I got pulled over and, and a police officer, a decent police officer said, you know what, I'm supposed to arrest you. But if you go see a judge, you can get this taken care of. So I went to see a judge, got mm -hmm. it taken care of. And I had the document from there. And at that time, I was working as a psychologist and went to the, uh, the crisis unit where I was working. And in the parking lot, someone smashed into my vehicle. And when the cop showed up and said, well, your driver's license is expired. I said, well, I have the paperwork from the judge. Can I show it to you? And she grabbed me and slammed my head into the car and cuffed me. She? Yeah. <laughs> Normally you have to pay extra for that. I did. Yeah. I did. But she, she, she smashed my head into the car and reached in and pulled out the paper that I was reaching in for and read it. And it was a it was a document from a judge. She tore it up and she said, "This doesn't do you any good." She threw it on the ground. Oh and my! And the director of the, the the mental health center came out and said, "Hey, this guy's an employee. What's going on?" I saw what happened and she let me go. Wow! But, Whoa! Yeah. Whoa. So, but what are you going to do? Fight back? No, you take it. Oh, it turned out. It turned out that she take was the. Back when when I went to complain about it, they oh. said it couldn't have possibly happened because she was the high school resource officer. Who was, who was off duty and had got called in. <clears throat> she was just having a bad day. Oh my goodness. Yeah. She was having a bad day. That's yeah. a cue for being a bad cop. Is that yeah. a bad? Well, and by the way, the other reason that she couldn't have done it, even though everybody saw it, was because she was she was African American and I'm white. So <laughs> it was impossible that, that she did that to me because she knows what the consequences would have been. That was what the guy from the FDLA, the Florida Department of Law Enforcement, told me. Wow. And I said, you know what? I don't care if she gets penalized. I just want someone to have a talk with her about actually discovering whether someone's dangerous before she hurts them. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That was in 1989, 1990, something like that. Really? Yeah. Oh, Eatonville, oh, Florida, just outside of Orlando. Hmm. hmm. Yeah. So Mike, how's everything up in Canada? Uh, hey, I'm, I'm doing great. Last night I, uh, do you guys know what Nanaimo bars are? If I say Nanaimo bars, do you know what they are? What? Is that a place where Nanaimos hang out and drink whiskey? Uh, <laughs> Nanaimo bars are like a baked good we have up here. It's like a layer of oats and uh, uh, oats and coconut and then a layer of cream and then a layer of chocolate on top. So I, uh, Canadian. I'm just stuck in a drinking bar. <laughs> yeah, Nanaimo bars are good. Now, so last night I took um, a Nanaimo bar that had every single element had uh, butter that was laced with marijuana. And so I took last night a heroic dose of, of marijuana baked goods. And I bothered Checky for half the night. And I watched that late night show that you watched. And it was just absolutely delightful. So yeah, I'm, I'm feeling pretty good today. Thank you for asking. <laughs> yeah, well, that, that sounds good to me. It was. It was a lovely, <laughs> lovely night. What's that bar called again? A Nanaimo bar. Nanaimo? Nanaimo bar, yeah. You can check it out if you N A I A I M O. I think that's it. Nanaimo bar. Well, wait a minute. They sell them at they sell them at Costco. Would it be N I N or is it Costco? N I N N A N A I M O. Nanaimo bar. Yeah. Oh, I see it. Okay. There it is. They're they're delicious, and one of my the agents in my firm. She baked me a whole plate of uh, of marijuana laced Nanaimo bars, and it was. Uh. And I was grateful, and like I said, I was. I'll, I'll tell you how high I got. Steve was talking about the Grateful Dead. Uh, people. Last, so last night I came up with the idea. I said, "Hey, big Dave sure. Letterman fans, they should be called Letterheads, shouldn't they?" Showed <laughs> <laughs> me looking like a like a uh, like a Klondike bar, like it has ice cream in the middle. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but it's not ice cream. That's a, that's like pretty. That's like a custardy icing cream thing. It's good. It's really good. But anyway, so yeah, the Shecky then put me back onto the uh, onto the right path from there, and and I and I said thank you, and I went to bed. But uh, yeah, it was a, it was a good night. Yeah, are you gonna bill him for those hours, Shecky? <laughs> <laughs> I just told him I thought the word Letterman letterheads was the stupidest thing I've ever heard. Letterheads? Right. <laughs> Were there a group called Letterheads? No, there no, should he be. was trying to start. I thought, I thought they were called Davidians. <laughs> <laughs> Davidians, yeah, very good. Davidians is very good. <laughs> so, did you come up with Letterheads, Mike? Uh, I would blame the Nanaimo bars. I think they did. <laughs> no, oh, I see. <laughs> 
I'd never heard it. I thought I thought in all the years, and, and there's some culty David Letterman fans out there. Like he's got somebody, some pretty somebody would call themselves a letterhead. Yeah, I would think that that yeah. I wouldn't be the first to have uttered that, but I don't know. I thought it was kind of clever in my drug induced stupor. Yeah. Mm. Well, you were. How's everything <laughs> up in uh, Connecticut, Jeff? Oh, it's nice and cold and rainy today, and here too. Yeah, I didn't go out. I didn't want to go out. Yeah, yeah. Kind of crappy, but yeah. it's and all right. How about Andrew? In your in your environs, how are things going? Yesterday was gorgeous. Went for the first time to an outdoor party with a bunch of friends, all vaccinated. Mm -hmm. And today it's dark, rainy. Here too. It's it's the Cleveland the Cleveland tourist uh, slogan is if you don't like our weather, wait thirty hours. <laughs> <laughs> and it's 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 filling. Last week, I had to drive for a first time, went to visit a client on site and drove to St. Louis. And on the way back, five hours of torrential rain from uh, Terre Haute, Indiana, until I hit until I hit home. It was yeah. nuts. We should just call the show. How's the weather where you are? Yeah. <laughs> That's exciting. The only problem is one, two, three, four, five of us here. Are in the same place. All, all having the same weather. <laughs> but that's well, about 85 and sunny out here. So 92 yeah. and sunny in Austin today. Really? Wow. It's about time. It's yesterday was 80 here, and today it's like 65 now, again. Did you have lousy weather a couple of days ago? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. So you, you sent us your bad weather, is what you said. <laughs> yes, I said. Yeah, that's what Mandy was getting, was probably what we had on Saturday. Yeah, yeah. So one thing I did yesterday, though, is I got on my bicycle. Mm -hmm. and I was riding all over the place. Oh, just so oh, really? Yeah. Cool. Well, the fact that you're running all over the place, walking. I'm not running. You're walking. He's about. mostly tripping. <laughs> tripping. <laughs> I'm sure I better exercise. If he can exercise, yeah. I can exercise. Now, how's it's the weather bad. where you are, Kathleen? Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Always. You don't have your, you're not near your window right now, are you? Oh, there yeah, you she go. was just showing us. Yeah. Oh, there you go. That's so uh, always that's, cool at the coast, but yep, yeah, that's the coast. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Ah, remember the days when if I were to call out to California, it would cost me a lot of money. Oh my gosh. And yeah. Now I can see everybody. Long I can see. Yeah. Um, uh, Steve Bender downtown. I can see Andrew out in Cleveland. I can see up into Canada. It's it's amazing. You you mentioned this last night to me, Marjorie. That you found it all kind of mm -hmm. amazing, right? It is amazing. And because uh, it, she has constant meetings with like her friends, uh, and and uh, you know it's it's really it's it's pretty cool all the way around. It's we do so we do it's a different group of people. It's great. Mm -hmm. yeah. who, who knew one day you know we'd all become Max Headroom? Yeah. No. I love Max Headroom. We're getting sick. Me too. Here's, yeah. the, here's the part of the show I like to bring up. What is Shecky watching these days? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I was re-watching the series Coupling, the British series. Oh, yeah. Series from oh, yeah. Yeah. That was... I watched I the entire I season two the other night. It was the British version, essentially. And then, of course, Legends of Tomorrow started last. What? Yeah, right. Uh, but uh, coupling was kind of like a uh, uh, a British version of Friends. Mm. Much better. But it, I much think it was better. better. Didn't it predate Friends? Well, it was 2000. No, no, it didn't. Yeah. But except they had sex on coupling. Yeah. Yeah. So that was better. <laughs> Um, and and there was a couple, of and then of course NBC in their infinite wisdom, hey, we'll do an American version of it. I oh, think they it did try weeks. an American version, didn't they? And it was yeah. terrible. It was just hey, horrible. Brian. What? You, what? What are you? You waving at Brian? Brian? I'm waving at Brian. Yes, everybody. Hello, Brian. Hi, Brian. Hi, Brian. Hi Marjorie. Hi. You're looking good. Yeah. 
<laughs> I'm trying to get to the 30, uh, the 230s, but it's a little bit hard. So I, I dropped 30 pounds so far. Really? Wow. Yeah. I can't lose weight to save my life. I've been walking every day. I've been on my diet every day and I can't lose weight. Yeah, I think everybody, I mean, Andrew, Andrew will maybe attest to this too. I think everybody has their reason or, or thing that they have to figure out. For me, it was snacks. I would go to Newark, like uh, 45 minutes away, and I'd stop at fast food or grab something. You know, kids, my gosh, so many good snacks. We didn't have those snacks when we were kids. So, you know, no. and so I'd grab something to just drive to work with, you know, and unfortunately, it's an ego or, or cookies or something, and then another one and another one. So uh, I got on this other program, and they have certain things to eat, so some, some snack stuff. So it's working out really good. So I found my thing. And it's helping out so much. You know, a lot of people doing a lot of exercise. That helps them. Different kind of thing. Mine is just always my food intake. So Well, it was my food intake. The reason I, I lost all that weight, 60 pounds, was low carb. Yeah. And now I'm doing low carb and I'm walking and I'm not losing. I don't think I'm losing a pound. Yeah. I haven't gotten on the scale, but I've got. Well, and, and your, your quote, perfect weight. Yeah. <laughs> it was, it was, I don't know if that's a perfect way. Here's the problem. Here's the problem. I had that operation a year ago. Oh, come on. Enough with that. That was several years. That was no, that, year. that affects your metabolism, Marjorie. Oh, Dr. Marjorie. <laughs> <laughs> no, it Andrew, affects, it, Andrew, how did you lose yours? I dropped about 160 pounds by cutting out carbs. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. My, but, but you know, the leading, the leading cause of obesity in America actually is diet books. Because yeah. every, every single one of them is that excuse why you can't lose weight. Yeah. 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 You just got to pick something that works and stick with it and, and forget all the mm -hmm. bullshit that's out there. You know, I think, I think the, the one program I know that, that has done the least for people in my circle is that Weight Watchers thing. Yeah, spend all their day focused and writing down. Somehow, yeah. if you write it down, it has no calories. <laughs> and I did. Um, I did no carbs and no sugars for a year and lost seventy pounds. Well, I lost wow. sixty, but then I gained back about thirty. I, mean, I would say you do sugar, huh? You eat sugar? No. Okay, I don't get it then. Well, I think it had a lot to do with my metabolism shifting because of the of the prostate operation I had. It it could it actually could be. Yeah, but your testosterone levels lower. Yeah, you're uh, absolutely correct. You hit it right. Yeah, yeah. yeah you know. but and and thing. also uh, <clears throat> different different hormonal changes besides that. There's it's not just that one. So, sorry, yeah. I'm sorry, Jeff. I spoke over you. No, that's all right. No, I I was going to say that I think one of the things that bothers you, Alex, is that first of all, for the last year you've been sitting at home. Well, that's part of it, but I don't and know, I know you're before, trying. And the year before that, and the year before that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't want to get so clinical. The year before that, the year before that, and the year before that. I think you have psychological problems. <laughs> I didn't know that. Well, I think I think some of it had to do with COVID, but I don't think I. I the thing that was more. Uh, in line with me gaining weight back <clears throat> was not, I don't, I'm, I haven't changed my diet. I'm still low carb. Okay. There's no, don't take any sugars in at all. All right. But it's, it's, uh, uh, I, I think it had a lot to do with my metabolism being, being shifted because of the uh, prostate operation and also being indoors for a year didn't mm. help either. You know. how, how much are you eating quantity wise though? The myth about the low carb thing is, well, once I'm in that fat burn mode, I can eat as much as I want. I, oh, eat, no. I eat, ask Marjorie, do I eat very much during a given day? Not really. No, not at all. Yeah. In fact, I'm look, eating less than I did when I was on that low carb diet. Yeah. The other thing is to look through what you're eating. Like if you're eating like sliced meats that have nitrates, and there's there's the preservatives and things that go into a lot I'm of the doing low that carb. Either. You know, the, I uh, have about one meal a day, and it's the one that usually Marjorie has. Then you uh, may not be fueling the furnace enough for your body to burn. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that's the point. He doesn't have carbs, and he has no energy, and wonders why. Force, why? Yeah. Yeah. Force yourself to have an egg for breakfast. Try try to get about at least three grams of carbs in the morning, six in the middle of the day, and eight. Mm -hmm. I'm not. I'm sorry. Three grams of protein, protein. not not carbs. 
in the morning, six in the middle of the day and eight at night is a minimum. Yeah. Okay. And, and spread it out to get the furnace burning. Cause if you're not, if you're, if your body isn't awake, you're just, you're, you're in freezer mode. Oh, I see what well, that could be. You yeah. know, I think the drugs that you're taking though may have changed since your surgery. And you maybe you ought to ask the doctor if you could take something different. That could be too. Yeah, I had to stop taking. I, I think I've lost a lot of weight <laughs> because I'm taking nine pills every day. <laughs> yeah, I, I was checking. I was checking my cart, and for me, it's carbs. But let's just like Andrew saying, they, actually, these bars and stuff that they they call them fuelies. They want you to eat one every two and a half hours or eat one of their different kind of thing, either that or shake or something. And it does help that metabolism. But I was tracking in December 1st, I was tracking my carb intake and it was like uh, uh, 1200 a day. And geez, oh. with this stuff, it's like 600 a day. 600 very, carbs a day you're eating? Yeah. yeah. Now? Yeah. That's a lot. That does a lot. Calories, yeah, calories. Calories, calories. Not carbs, calories. Yeah. So, yeah, the calories, and I, I, so I cut that in half, but then I supplement with, and I always like vegetables and stuff like that. During the day, I cut stuff up on the weekend stuff. So now all that stuff that I was doing good, now with this Fuelies, this this uh, program, it's really helped me. It's catapulted me, so. It's Fuelies? They call Fuelies. That's their little tagline, so, yeah. Yeah, yeah but they're, they're just healthy bars and healthy shakes and healthy mashed potatoes. So I add some meat from leftovers from the kids and stuff like that. So I just, my thing, like I said, some people love exercise and they lose weight. Some people have their different things. So I just started working out again this weekend. So yeah, I, yeah. I, yeah I've exercised my whole life and I didn't start losing weight until I cut back on the calories. Oh yeah. 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 Calories are big. Yeah, and no, um, I, I'm losing, I lose so much weight. These people at work are thinking I'm sick because I had to take a couple doctor appointments and my boss sort of knew and, and that <laughs> I'm okay. Yeah. And losing fat with the home liposuction kit. That's not good. Oh, oh. I'm wondering, Marjorie, uh, you, we order, <laughs> you order a lot of food from uh, fresh direct. Fresh direct. Huh? And um, yeah, Stu Leonard. And I'm wondering, I'm wondering if it's so well, for uh, Stu Leonard, you're buying actual food, but I'm wondering. Yeah, but even in the stir fries, the, 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 the vegetables and the stuff is all kept separate. Yeah. It's all but, fresh. But I mean, it, 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 my, yeah, I'm just, just wondering. I guess that they don't do anything that causes. No. Well, what, what vegetables are you eating, Alex? I, 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 eat basic, broccoli. I eat broccoli. Broccoli. And once in a while, a tomato. No carrots, no, no, I, 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 no, no avoid I, the root I, vegetables, they're full of sugar. I also do what I consider the great wonder food, which is avocados. Mm. They, no, they no, are, avocados they're, are good they're, fats. They're actually good, good fats. Fat. Yeah. They're healthy. Low, yeah. Yeah. They, they're, fat. they're low in uh, carbohydrates. Yeah. If I, you're going to do the root vegetables, do them prior to working out. No, yeah. if you're, if so you're usually to... I'll I'll down some beets about 20 minutes prior to working out so I can start opening up the blood vessels. Yeah, the problem is that if you're trying to do low carbs when you're trying to get your body into a state of ketosis mm -hmm. and the root vegetables have high sugar, especially beets. So what it does is it negates the benefit of everything else you're eating. Well, I'm doing you don't want to you don't want to do that. I'm if if you're on a on a different diet that's low calorie with with sugars and things, then the beets are fine. Avocados They're pretty are much plant-based. Avocados yeah, are low in carbs, are low yeah. in carbs, yep. and and they supposedly uh, 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 raise, it, raise your metabolism uh, so that you burn up fuel. Well, they're healthy fats. Yeah, they're yeah. healthy fats. They're the yeah. good fats. And and yeah. and Shecky doesn't care about any of this because he just eats. That's it, right. <laughs> you, no, I eat very little. And did you stop? Uh, you, did you you stop taking your medication? Is that right, Rick? I stopped last <laughs> a year ago now, March. And yeah. still, really, that's not awesome. yeah. you you see, I don't feel. Yeah, I can't explain it. Yeah, my my a friend of my uh, older friend of mine, he was the same way. He's he's like. Man, I just stopped taking all my medication. I have a doctor uh, appointment next week to tell him. And I said, oh, there's another guy I know that did that too. And You know, and I was waiting for my doctor to yell at me when I told him, he goes, you feel good? Yeah, he goes, 
keep it up. Yeah. yeah. But Brian, you really do. You can see the change. You really look good. If you feel yeah. good too, you're you're on the right track. Well, oh. Yeah, yeah. There's only Congratulations. one. Congratulations. Thank you. I still take one one pill, one like five milligram pill for uh, blood pressure. Uh, so I've been I monitor that like every night though, and it's been really really low. Everything else has been doing really good. So I'm just I'd like to get off of that. But it's I tried a little bit when I was in Hawaii, and I came back and my blood pressure was bouncing around a little bit. So. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, it, it's been a struggle. I mean, man, yeah, it's been a hard. I'm six four, so everybody says, "Oh, you hide it well," and all this stuff. And I'm like, no. And I had some pictures, and I could see that last month, and I was like, "Jeez." Well, the it's trouble is, well, if you get nostalgic for the old days, you can just carry around a couple of bowling balls. I know. That's I told my <laughs> friends that. I said my friend Charlie said two bowling balls, and I'm like, oh my god, that's. So <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, the thing is that the, uh, I, oh, I remember when I first came to New York, I had no doctors. Mm. And I didn't feel good about something, so I went to a doctor. I think Marjorie sent me to a doctor she knew who turned out to be a horrible doctor. But you were going to him. You just simply suggested him to him. I forget <laughs> what the ailment was. But anyway, he gives me one pill. And then I go to another doctor, he gives me two. And then up to three. And up to four. I take six pills a day now. And I'm wondering if I need any of them. Well, I just feel like they could all be slamming into each other, you know. Yeah. yeah I mean, when you take so many pills, I mean, do they do you take blood tests like to to re to recalibrate sort of or do they do that? I don't know. Well, our age, like the blood work like three or four times a year and it comes yeah, every three months. It's a Oh, I'm yeah. convinced the doctors get training on how to put people on pills and they have no training on getting them back off. Yep. Exactly. Well, <laughs> yes. well, I'm wondering. Well, if... I told Alex I had very bad psoriasis. Oh, he... So they gave me this $20,000 <clears throat> drug, which I only paid $5 for. <laughs> but I said to the doctor at one point, I said, when can I get off this drug? And he goes, never. So two years ago, I just stopped going. I haven't had psoriasis since then. I got to tell you, nice. Shecky had the worst case of psoriasis I've ever so seen I, in my life. I know what, you know where I saw it? On the rug in your bedroom. Oh, the rug. Like, <laughs> when my like city. I vacuumed the rug before she would come. So she didn't have to deal with it. He had, I think you said that there wasn't, a, almost there wasn't an inch on your body. Everywhere except my face. Yeah. Wow. And oh. and they gave him one of these new shots. You see him advertised on television for psoriasis. Stolara. 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 Yeah. And 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 how long did it take before it all went away? <laughs> Within like a month or two. One a month oh. or two. And he said you said the only thing you could find was one spot like on the bottom of your hand or something. Yeah, but there's nothing here anymore, you know, as you can see. Yeah, no, I, mean, I mean, I can show you a picture of what these hands looked like five years ago. Well, they were like a disaster. Area. Right. Now, they said to you, you had to keep taking this. You would the never rest of my stop life. It. And you there's stopped it, and you're fine. Yeah. Wow. And if it ever starts up again, you start taking it. And then it. I'll go back and yeah. deal yeah. with it. But, I mean... He, he, this was something that I know that Shecky had for years and years and years that I knew him. It was just, it was... Uh, well, going back to the 80s. Yeah, yeah. It was a real problem for you. I mean, psychologically, it was a horrible problem. You know, you lived with it constantly. Well, if it, had, if it ever had been on my face, I would have quit Letterman. But it was never on my face. So in theory, I could hide it. Yeah. Okay, so so, but but nevertheless, I mean, it was itchy and everything, right? Oh no, well, I would be sitting there in the tape room, like doing this, is I'm flaking, you know, and it's flaking off, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so it when when they came along with this drug, it was a godsend for you. It really was. I mean, absolutely. I'll tell you another one they cured. I had a friend once who came down with um, hepatitis C. And it really ruined her life. I mean, you know, didn't couldn't didn't want to date, you know, and it it, it causes all kinds of problems, and it, and you, you can infect somebody else with it. Uh, and uh, all of a sudden, one day they come up with a cure. 
a pill. I think it was a pill that mm -hmm. you take for hepatitis C. You take it for like a month. In fact, my friend uh, Steve Kravitz just got through taking it himself. And it just gets rid of it. This has been something that's been a real problem for people for years. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we, we these medicines do help people, but I think the idea of like with Shaggy, oh, well, you got to keep doing it for the rest of your life. Apparently not, you know, and, and if it does come back, go get some more shots, then probably yeah. stop taking them for a while, you know. Um, but $20,000. <laughs> but I was paying $5. Huh? <laughs> what? So, 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 I was paying five, it was, they were billing insurance twenty thousand dollars my out-of-pocket was five dollars right so it's a a deal. well it's not that it's a racket i think they charge twenty thousand because they know they're going to get five you know i mean no no the insurance the medicare whatever yeah. yeah well medic pharmaceutical company they were getting the 20 grand from yeah but my out-of-pocket was five dollars but medicare Medicare tells them what they can charge. And they go, oh. Okay. Yeah, they set the price. Yeah, they go, no, oh. The Bush made it so that they couldn't. The Medicare is not allowed to negotiate with, with pharmaceutical companies. They have to pay what they say. When I had my prostate. But the secondary insurance has to pay whatever Medicare sets. When yeah. I had my prostate uh, thing, uh, with the first with the uh, uh, radiation, and then uh, another, uh, then the, the seeds, the radioactive seeds, or as I call them, the Giuliani's, uh, <laughs> the radioactive seeds, the whole bill came to, to $110,000. Here comes uh, uh, Medicare. Sorry, you can only charge $20,000 for it. All right. And they expect that. That's why they bring the price up that high, you know. Uh, rather than just say, oh, we're going to charge you. Well, they do charge you whatever Medicare. They have to, whatever Medicare will charge. But uh, that's, uh, you know, I mean, um, the price, that's why the, uh, the prices on drugs have just gotten ridiculous. When they, when they go through that whole story about, well, you know, we have to pay for research. Well, the 17 years, mostly the government is contributing to that research. Yeah. It's not all by themselves. It's not out of their pocket. Yeah, yeah. Well, if you look at the companies that raise pharmaceutical prices the most, they've done no research. They just buy patented products and raise the price. Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't know what on Shecky's they actually paid, what uh, Medicare would pay. Although, was your does Medicare? Yeah, Medicare does take care of, uh, of prescription medicine, but was that did that come under prescription medicine? Yeah, but I wasn't on Medicare. Wasn't on Medicare. Was on some prescription plan you had. It was on United Healthcare. Yeah, yeah. and then they tell the government, they tell the the doctor what their the company. No, what they can. Solara talk. had a card that they gave you, and that's the number that went to the whatever, and that's why it was five dollars. Okay. Okay. Well, in, in any event, what I'm saying is, is that you know they they keep. Uh, trying to jack the prices up because they know they, they're going to have to take less after it's all over. Yeah. I, you know, it's, it's strange, but you, you had that medicine and yet you had a medical condition and this was something that cured that medical condition. Why doesn't it come under Medicare? That's what I don't understand. Why does it have to come under some kind of drug plan? I know it's, it's, it's cured by a drug, but still you have a condition that needs to be taken care of. If you got operated for that condition, they would pay the money for the operation. So why wouldn't they pay for the pill? I think that's that's another question. My prolia shot is, is under uh, Rx. It's not covered by medical. Right, but it's is it for a condition you currently have or a condition you're trying to prevent? It's a condition I have. You have? Yeah. What you 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 don't look like you're hunched over all the time, and you. But I have brittle bones. I mean, I, the prolia helps with that. Brittle bones. Okay, you know, uh, but uh, then again, you know what we've been arguing about for years is uh, chiropractors. 
She swears. On I swear by him. He's great. He's a doctor also. Me too. Yeah. Me too. I have a bad back, and in between my back shots, he adjusts it, and it feels great. Yeah, I went to him because she said, go to him, he'll take care of your blah, blah, blah. And it doesn't happen in one session. I, I know, but th that, I think, is the come on. It won't happen in one it's session. Not. It's like going to a shrink. He's not going to be able to okay. cure you in one session. If you're dealing with back pain, a chiropractor can help. If you go to a chiropractor expecting him to solve other problems, you're nuts. It's not. Yeah. Oh, he's going to adjust my back and my allergies are going to go away. Yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, but some of them will tell you that. Yeah, that's the one yeah, that you run will. away from. Yeah, well, right. also, you know, I had a, I had a uh, uh, guy on my show once who was talking about psychiatry and saying that here's the thing with psychiatry. If you go to a psychiatrist and you don't feel better after the first session, don't go back. Because any good shrink should be able to make you feel better after the first session. And that you shouldn't have to constantly keep going to the shrink. I mean, you start going to a shrink, you go every week for the next 20 years. Yeah. You know, right. and, and the fact is, they should be able, according to him, they should be able to cure your problem in, say, five visits, 10 visits. Hey, hey Alex, yeah. I want to hear some interesting breaking news just came across the wire. I well, got it. That's my fancy way of calling my cell phone. The Gates? Yeah, the Gates is, are ending their marriage after 27 years. Yeah, no more Bill and Melinda. Yeah. Really? Oh. Isn't she yeah. too old? Isn't she too young to get a divorce? No. <laughs> She's in my prime time now. Wait a minute. Who, who, who were getting divorced? Bill, Bill, and Melinda Gates. Gates. Bill and Melinda Gates. I thought yeah. you meant Matt Gates. Oh, no. me too. Oh. Really? No, you can't you can't divorce a 60 year old. He's just yeah. got a you know chippy. Who? Bill? Um, I don't know about that. He's not married. Wow. That's really You're talking about I'm talking about Bill and Melinda. You're talking about douche gates, the yeah, I thought right. the Congress. <laughs> Matt Gates. Bill Gates is getting divorced. I thought yep. that was wow. marriage going for it. 27 years it says they've been married. Yeah. And that big foundation. That they started. Yeah, they we help we help them with uh, uh, testing TB in Africa. They they give us a bunch of money for R and D and stuff. So really I guess the tracking chip didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> Warren Buffett gave their foundation a big amount of money. Yeah, that, uh, yeah. That. I was gonna say Warren Buffett's a real influence on them, and he's they've talked about how he's an influence like on their marriage and and things like that. That's it's interesting that they've decided to call that quits. Well, he short sold their marriage. He made some money on that. Uh, <laughs> when you're when you're their age and you decide to get a divorce, you go, why? You know, I mean, isn't there a way of somehow you don't have to live with each other? Nobody says you have to live right. with each other. But why go through a whole messy divorce unless there's something just a real problem they've got between them? Well, it's who, like who? my friend Arthur who got divorced at seventy eight. Yeah, why? I mean, yeah, but when, you have, when you have a billion dollars, can't you get away from the wife, Michael? <laughs> <laughs> you assume it's going to be a messy divorce. It could be, yeah. if they here's the paperwork, let's go. They're pretty organized yeah. people. Yeah. Like Jeff Bezos, it's fine. Yeah. 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 The Bezos got yeah. a lot of money. Oh, in really? oh, you, yeah. huh. And you know you something? Started a foundation you would have thought that would have taken them out of the high billionaire category. No. <laughs> He just kept getting richer and richer. Yeah. So it's like that, that mythological creature, you cut off a head and three new ones grow. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, boy, I just don't understand why why you would get to why they would get divorced. I mean, I, I, they, they had a wonderful thing going for it, you know. How do you know it was wonderful? Well, I don't I don't, I don't know. He was Jewish and she was Catholic, so maybe that was. <laughs> yeah, from the beginning. No, that wasn't. Um, the money dried up. <laughs> yeah. Well, no. Marjorie, no. Marjorie, Marjorie and I, there's yeah, still yeah. plenty of money. He changed okay. to a Mac computer and they got the board. <laughs> <laughs> <You know. laughs> she did. She did. She went to Mac. She went yeah. to a Mac. Yeah. That cheater. <laughs> yeah, that's what you do. If you're married to Bill Gates and you really want to piss him off, you buy a Mac. <laughs> he owns part of Mac. He really does. Yeah. He helped them get out of the hole in the 90s. Yeah.
Yeah, it's an old them. IBM computer. Yeah, well, this is kind of sad news. It's very sad. It, news. It's surprising. Yeah. Bad about. It. Yeah. But what's going to happen to the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation is going to be like a kid. They get them on weekends or something. No, I'm sure it'll <laughs> still continue. Yeah, they'll still continue. Oh, yeah, yeah, be. Yeah. Just because they're getting divorced doesn't mean they're not going to talk anymore. They got kids together. They got kids. They've got they do the have time. kids, don't they? Yeah. yeah. Kids and then ultimately grandkids. Yeah. Oh wow. Well, hey, listen, we've kind of run out of time here. This has been another nice just hanging out mm -hmm. and not mentioning the T word once. You know, <laughs> That's right. Or even the B word. We didn't mention the B word. Mm -hmm. You know, we did mention the B and M. Mention BM, what? BM. <laughs> Bill and Melinda. The shitty thing to bring up. <laughs> the shitty thing to bring up. Uh, <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> anyway, thank you, Steph. I appreciate you being here. I, Mike, wonderful. Andrew, thank you. Charlie Wallace, love having you here. Uh, Len LaFrisco, uh, terrific. Jackie, as always, wonderful. Scott Boddicker, glad you called this show, you know, because uh, you're fun. Steve Bender, Thanks for demonstrating for me. Uh, <laughs> Marjorie <laughs> Miller, I'll see you soon. If you see her, tell her I love her. And <laughs> thank you very much, Bob Q. Kazoo, better known as Kathleen, and the ever popular Brian Neary. All of you give a big, uh, big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye too, and bring this whole session uh, to an end. Bye bye, everybody. Yeah. Hey, guys.